Now, last week, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton traveled to Mexico as part of the Obama administration's efforts to help Mexico curb its drug violence, and she said this. Our demand for drugs is what motivates these drug gangs. I mean, if if they didn't think they were going to make a bunch of money across the border, they'd go into another line of work. So we keep hearing about these drug wars along the Mexico-U.S. border, might even affect the United States, might destabilize the government of Mexico. Maybe some of that is hyperbole. But make your case. If pot alone was legalized, how much would it defuse the drug cartel violence Well, I was in Mexico? struck uh, around Christmas, Brian. The Attorney General of Arizona, Terry Goddard, fairly conservative guy. His father was a governor. He's considered a, one, a possible governor. He came out and said, look, I'm not saying we should do it, but given how much money the Mexican cartels are making for marijuana, maybe we should think about making it legal. A few weeks later, the city council of El Paso, Texas, right on the border, said we need, we need a national debate on this stuff. A few weeks ago, Loretta Sanchez, who chairs one of the congressional subcommittees on national security and uh, and the border said this basically the same thing. And, you know, and I'll tell you, yesterday on Face the Nation, Barack Obama got asked about, uh, got asked about Mexico. And he said, well, you know, it's like those days when we sent Elliot Nesson to get uh, Al Capone during Prohibition. Now, he wasn't bringing the obvious punchline because sending an Elliot Ness like the aid to Mexico is like the surges in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's an urgent response to the crisis at the moment. But in the long term, no amount of surges is going to put create solve this problem. You need a fundamentally different policy, and we need a national debate about making marijuana legal. Do you have any kind of rough stat on how much of the drug business from Mexico that keeps these drug cartels getting rich is from marijuana as opposed to cocaine? I have no high hard stats, but I have been stunned at the extent to which people like Terry Goddard and people in the U.S. government are saying that it's over 50 percent of the Mexican drug trafficking revenue comes from marijuana. I don't know if it's true, but that's the government's numbers, not mine. And I'll tell you, that means it's the first time ever that legalization of marijuana, which is already supported by 40 percent of Americans, actually presents itself as a realistic partial solution to drug-related violence abroad. Josh in Westchester wants to go up the generational chain here, I think. Josh? Hi. Hey. I have two teenagers. I live in Westchester. Um, You know, on the one hand, I would be concerned about the kids getting caught and smoking if it were legal. But, you know, to to just pretend that it wouldn't, you know, kids are drinking constantly, and there's really nothing we can do about it. We've tried. Every parent tries. And the same thing would happen with with pot, but I think we're just sort of sticking our heads in the sand. How about, we... how, how about the parents in your neighborhood? Are they smoking pot? Absolutely. You know, I'm always amazed when I start to get to know some some parents in the town and we start chatting and to find out how many people used to smoke pot and still smoke pot and would probably do it more if it was legal. Where are they um, getting it? Are they driving to some remote corner of the Bronx in an unmarked zip car or what? It, that's a really good question. You know, I, I try to just stay away from that discussion. I mean, I don't buy it. I don't know where to get it. But, you know, people get it. E- either they're they're walking in the city somewhere and they get it or they have some connection or they have a friend somewhere who lives in yeah. the country who grows it. I mean, Josh, they get it. Yeah. Thank you, Josh and Westchester. Thank you very much. Where are all these Baby, middle-aged baby boomers getting there. Well, I'll, I'll tell you something, Brian. I grew up in Westchester. I, I only tried marijuana a couple times in high school. I really started smoking when I went to college. Uh, but I'll tell you something. Right now, you have tens of millions of American parents who are smoking marijuana in the bedroom or behind closed doors, putting the towel by the door. Meanwhile, their teenagers are doing the same thing. And it's a kind of a collective lie that's going on. So far as I know, more and more parents in America, when you ask them where they're going to get their marijuana from, it's oftentimes from their kids. Because the kids forever and ever have had fantastic fantastic asset. 80% access, 80% of all American high school seniors consistently say for the last 40 years, it's easy to get pot if you want it. A little tougher for their parents, which is why I think parents oftentimes have to look to their kids.